Well, here I am again. Uh, let's see here. Today is Sunday, October 10th, or October 2nd, excuse me, not the 10th. And uh, we're going to take a look, as I mentioned the other day, at the uh, Christie's auction results from Asia Week down in New York a couple of weeks ago. How did it go? It, it did well. It did well. I think Christie's this time around um, uh, paid close attention to those estimates and so forth. And uh, overall, I think the sale did really, really well. This was the catalog cover with that uh, iconic Yuan Dynasty uh, uh, Celadon with the uh, biscuit uh, uh, brown coating. Uh, beautifully done, and we're going to get to the prices on that in a second because uh, a lot of people were curious about how it did. Uh, and this was the this was the auction. It started off with the jades, and the jades overall did really really well. Um, they, the vast majority of them brought within the estimates, and a number of them went well beyond the estimates. Uh, for example, this uh, this uh, cup right here, imperially inscribed uh, gray russet uh, cup with the. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful, uh, deep, fairly deep relief carving on it. Uh, estimated at sixty to eighty thousand, went for three hundred and forty thousand. That was one of the high points in the jades. Uh, they they had a number of good jades, and they and they all seemed to do quite well. Uh, before we get into that, though, I wanted to just quickly do this one because we had a bunch of inquiries on the identification and the preview assistance service through the, through our site over at Bitamount on this bronze. We had a bunch of people asking about it because the estimate was so low, two to three thousand um, dollars. Obviously, a, a sort of a, a, a very very low estimate ended up selling for fifty six hundred and seventy dollars in the end uh, which which is not a big surprise uh, we, we had looked at this vase in the preview I thought it was really really nice and I suspect one of you got this um, uh, or um, well a couple of you maybe uh, uh, we're gonna take a shot at it and I hope you got it if you didn't better luck next time but at any rate this was a nice bronze and it was in beautiful condition and it was good size too. It was uh, seven and a quarter inches tall, very attractively done, beautiful details, nice patina, had everything you wanted. Uh, very attractive vase. And uh, then over to this, the, uh, the, the jade, uh, they dated this just as Qing Dynasty. I think maybe they had a debate about whether it was 18th century or 19th century. When was it done? Because uh, it's very difficult to tell if they're not inscribed or marked at times. Uh, it can be a, a tough thing to tell. But this is a, a, one of the very popular uh, during the 18th and 19th century. Uh, this is a scene of uh, boys washing the elephant. And the elephant has got his head curled over. He looks like he's enjoying it. And you have a, 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 a Lohan behind it with a roof scepter. Um, uh, sort of guide, uh, probably you know, instructing the kids how to how to do it properly, and on this beautiful stand. This was a nice jade. It was about ten inches uh, long, uh, so it was good size, a big presence. Estimated at twenty to thirty thousand, and uh, went well over that. It almost doubled its high estimate. It went for fifty six thousand seven hundred dollars. But a beautiful example. But I, I th it may have just been the, there was some debate about when it was done because there's a big difference between Chinlung and 19th century at times. And uh, I, I think they went back and forth on it. I'm, I'm willing to bet they had a debate about it. And then this, the uh, pair of Guform uh, vases, Chinlung marked in period. Uh, very unusual color, um, the, 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 these, these carvings. The Gu form, of course, goes back, uh, well, you know, the, the Shang Dynasty in bronzes. And, of course, since then, they've made them in everything, porcelain, jades. Uh, they've carved them out of wood. Of course, naturally, they've done them in bronze. And uh, this one is embellished with um, decorations um, uh, associated with the Qing Dynasty. These uh, lap, these leaves coming up here, these uh, bok choy leaves or acanthus leaves, this dragon uh, decoration here, very Qing in its uh, design, and then this reticulation around the base, um, uh, nicely done, very, really, really nicely done. And they were, like I said, they were a good size, 11 inches tall, estimated at 180 to 250 thousand dollars, and they sold for 226 thousand. Not a surprise, not a big surprise. They were very nice, but very unusual color, almost a, almost like a celadon color, I suppose. And then this, the um, early Ming Dynasty uh, uh, Mei Ping vase with the uh, incise decoration on it. Um, I think some people may have thought, suspected this was a Yuan example, but uh, either way, I, I think probably more likely Ming. 
but uh, there it is. I had a couple of people asking about this, but what I thought about it, thought it was great. The color was good. It has that color. It's, it's, it, the value of Celadons is tied very closely to the tone of the green, and this had a very nice green tone to it. Beautiful, not too dark, um, uh, not too gray. You know, really, truly a, a, like a soft Celadon uh, celery color, uh, but beautifully made and uh, nicely potted, $150,000 estimate, went well over that, and went for $289,000. Beautiful example. And then over to this, the uh, large Famille Rose seated of the uh, Buddha Safa, uh, the Buddha figure, uh, nice, nice Famille Rose enameling all the way over it. And interestingly, there's another example almost identical to this up for sale right now. If you're a global member page user, it's over on the European pages, I believe. Uh, a really nice example, same size, virtually identical um, with a twenty dollars to $30,000 estimate. So if, if you're on the global pages you may, and you're, you, you shop in this category, you might want to check it out because they've, they've given it a, an estimate that's well below what this one brought. This was estimated one hundred and fifty to 250000 sold for six thirty. I think the one online currently available is probably going to bring close to, you know, bring a lot more than its estimate, but it may be an opportunity for somebody. This was 11 and 5 eighths inches tall, um, uh, chin lung period. Um, the only the only um, uh, uh, information on it, when it was in the JM Hu collection up until about 1995, Zande Lu collection. There it is. Um, but not much else is known about it, but it still did really, really well. These do not turn up often. These are pretty rare birds. And then over to this, this was the Yohan Celadon octagonal vase with the uh, brown dressing over the biscuit, uh, biscuit glaze, uh, the biscuit, uh, un, you know, the unglazed biscuit relief area here. This was a really nice example. Many of you have seen it before. It had, it had been in the hands of um, uh, Eskenazi in England, and I think if you have a copy of the dealer's hand, you might find it in there. I suspect it's, I think, I'm pretty sure I saw it in there. Uh, and you could probably read what he thought about it. But uh, this was a beautiful, beautiful example. These panels, uh, recessed panels, with these nice, uh, 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 nicely worked card flower panels all the way around it. Uh, good detail here, obviously, all the way around. Just a great example and very early. And um, one of the finest examples of this, this type of porcelain in the world. It was estimated at six to $800,000, sold for $882,000. Uh, but what a spectacular thing. And then this, this was one of the surprises. I thought this would do a lot better. It was, a, it was estimated, it was a 30 inch tall Kangxi vase, estimated at two to 300,000. And uh, I, I looked at this and I thought, boy, this thing is, is, is better than most. It's, it has an unusually slender body. The decoration was meticulous on it. It was in beautiful condition. And uh, I thought this would bring five to $700,000. I thought this would blow the estimate away. I really did. And uh, it didn't. It ended up going for 214000 Nothing to sneeze at, but I suspect 214000 including the buyer's premium, means the bidder just, whoever the, the winning bidder was, he just made the reserve on it. And that was it. It was a squeaker. But uh, what a great piece of Kangxi porcelain. And very big, 30 inches tall. It was a beast. And uh, over to this, the Yongshan Gi type uh, 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 sort of pear-shaped vase. Uh, very, very fine uh, glaze on it, exceptionally fine. And if you took the time to look at it, you'll see that there are actually two crackles here. You have the primary crackle, which is black. And then if you look at it a little closer, you'll see there's a secondary crackle running through it. And that's, that's one of the things that uh, I think collectors really like to see. They like to see that secondary crackle in there. It isn't a gold thread crackle. It doesn't have the right color, but it is there. And uh, it is a Yongchen mark and period piece. Uh, the mark is on the bottom um, right there. There it is. And uh, here's that brown dressing on the foot rim. It looks absolutely fine. It sold at Christie's Hong Kong in 2007. There it is. It was lot 1717. And uh, now it's back, and it'll, now, it'll have another Christie sticker on it. And, <laughs> and uh, there's the mark. Uh, uh, just the way you want to see it. Just the way you want to see the foot rim crisp, crisply done. Look at, look at the edge of that foot. Very, very crisp. Uh, nice, nice example. 
uh, $529,000 against a four to $600,000 estimate. Uh, so they, they got that one right, right off the bat. All right, and then over here to this Ming Dynasty, Jai Jing, Markin period, yellow and blue uh, 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 chrysanthemum dish uh, with this big uh, Shao character in the middle. Uh, what's interesting about this is that, is that the coloration on this is so terrific. Uh, and on the back too, uh, the back of it is just as beautiful as the front that, that very powerfully drawn rain mark and uh, this uh, green and, and red and yellow flowers running around the back. You can see where some of the yellow um, slid down a little bit. It ran a bit when they were, when they were after they applied it here. It actually got all the way down to the foot, sort of ran down um, when they put the red over. It looks like they had yellow and then they put some red enamel on top of it, probably trying to get this color. And uh, a, little, a, little, a little imperfection there, but kind of charming, actually. And it had a tiny bit of fritting on the rim, but overall, it was a very rare type, a very rare thing. And it was given a very modest estimate, ten to $15,000. And uh, if you think back and you've, you've been following the prices of marking period Jai Jing uh, examples, you, you, you'll recall that you know just plain blue and white pieces bring ten or $15,000 all day long. And this was, this was um, a, a yellow and blue example. Uh, so, you know, it's going to do a lot better, and it did. It sold for o over four times its high estimate. It went for fifty thousand four hundred dollars against a ten to fifteen thousand dollar estimate. All right, and if, and if you ever go to Giverny in France and you go to Monet's house, um, you'll see that he, this was one of his favorite color combinations: yellow and blue, yellow and blue. You see it in his dining room. And then on to this another marking period late Ming thing was that big bowl, ten inch bowl. Um, with these uh, 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 Shao characters done in the form of tree trunks. This was sort of a popular thing that they did in the, in the, in the Wan Li period and, the, and the, I think in the Jai Jing period as well. Uh, uh, but this was a big bowl, stoutly potted. Uh, the color was excellent. If you saw this bowl without the mark on it, uh, you, 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 you wouldn't be thought crazy if you thought it was a Kang Shi example uh, because of the tone of the cobalt, but it isn't. It's Wan Li. But look at the color of that blue. Boy, it's really, really good. Beautiful, beautiful Mohammedan blue. And uh, $22,680 on a twenty dollars to $30,000 estimate. And then this, the Jai Jing. Again, a Jai Jing Markin period. Uh, no, this isn't Markin period. It's just Jai Jing period. Double gourd. And I just like this vase a lot. I talked about it the, when we did the preview. I just thought the, 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 the colors were all so complementary to each other. The, 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 the tone, the different tones, the shifting tones of the blues, the way it's drawn, very freely drawn. And then these red and yellow flowers are going down over it and then fruit. And then again, you have these characters drawn in tree branches and vines um, on the bottom. And this wasn't an enormous vase at all. It was uh, eight and a half inches tall, nice size. Uh, six to eight thousand dollar estimate and uh, of course it did a lot better than that it went for twenty two thousand six hundred and eighty dollars really quite something um, I, I loved it and I guess a lot of people you know it's the kind of thing where if you see something you like and it really strikes a chord with you often it's going to strike a chord with somebody else uh, because uh, there are certain things that just seem to go that way and then on to this. This was one of my favorite things in the sale. I loved this thing. This great big sacrificial blue with gold uh, uh, decoration of a dragon. And they had dated it, I think, just as, what did they say, late Qing Dynasty. I thought it was older than that. I thought this was an earlier piece. But in fairness, in, in the Guangxu period, they did a lot of work with um, sacrificial blue, blue cobalt, blue grounds with just gilding over it. It was a, a popular color compare colors that they used. The uh, gilt decoration on this was excellent. When you look at the detail of the dragon's face in particular, um, the eyes and all of the whiskers and all the little details and, the, and all, just all of it. It's just beautifully done. And it was all intact. It was in remarkable condition because gilding just rests on the surface. It doesn't, it's not under the glaze. So if anything bangs up against it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to impact the, the gilding. And so it survived all these years. And it was just listed as late Qing. Um, but uh, in, in my mind, the, the, uh, the bottom of it looked older. Um, the, the base of this looks like an early 19th century jar but, or vase, but uh, for some reason they, they disagreed and that's the date they came up with. Uh, and it went for $12,600 against a ten dollars to $15,000 estimate. And it was 20 inches, 22 and 3 quarter inches tall. So this is a pretty big pot. And uh, I liked it a lot. Maybe, maybe it had damage to it on the other side or something. I don't know. But uh, I thought the I thought the, the the end end price was very very reasonable.
really reasonable. And then the uh, squared uh, 18th century Chinlung uh, uh, Famille Rose uh, uh, jar with the uh, ladies on it. And this was a nice thing. This was just a nice thing aesthetically. It was very attractive, uh, beautifully decorated, very finely detailed, uh, particularly in the way the enamels, the colored enamels were treated down in through here in the folds of the robes. And then this beautiful gilt decoration work all around the faces and head. And then, the, and then it's, it's picked up again on this uh, archaistic uh, border that runs around it. You know, this uh, lady seated at a, an eight, 18th century table um, with a bowl of fruit and a little vase and fresh flowers. Just a lovely scene. And it, there's different scenes on each side. Uh, very well done all the way around. I like this scene too, the one with the ladies and the, she's there on the edge of a little courtyard and garden with a child and uh, the, she's carrying her fan and so forth. Um, just absolutely charming scene and uh, went for twenty three thousand nine hundred and forty dollars on a twenty to thirty thousand dollar estimate so again right in the range that's what you want to see and then this this was an interesting plate I they had dated it as uh, 18 to 19th century which I suppose the, the implication is that it's uh, I usually take that to mean late 18th to early 19th century uh, but this plate looked older than that to me um, this, this, I, I'm not quite sure where, why they thought it was that age. Uh, they must have their reasons, but uh, to me, uh, the, the, the foot rim, the decoration, the, the double serpents around the pearl on the back, the way it's done, um, and the way these enamels appear, this looks like a Kang Shi dish to me. Um, with, the, with the coloration and the the uh, the, the use of this uh, 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 aubergine tones, the translucent blues, the trans this yellowish greens, and all that, and and the, and the texture of the glaze, um, I don't know. May, maybe the glaze up close or something looks a little different. But uh, it was estimated at five to seven thousand, and went for seventy five hundred. It went over the high estimate, and I thought it was terrific. It was a big plate too. It was eighteen inches in diameter. This wasn't a little dish. This was a big piece of porcelain uh, certainly interesting and then the uh, incense burner this thing um, uh, probably Kung Shi period uh, b beautifully done a nice detail uh, had everything you wanted to see on it and there it is uh, if you pulled it in and looked at the details of the reticulation these lotus lotus flowers the way they're done the edges are all polished down nicely and uh, you have this beautifully done lid with the same reticulation up here. And then, it, then you have this archaistic border on it, very similar to what we just saw on the square vase. Uh, this pattern here, um, and it's here on this, this, on this as well. All right, it was a very lovely scene. And um, there it is on, on this bronze. And then you have this, uh, this uh, creature on the top. Uh, composing it, uh, and it had a sixty to eighty thousand dollar estimate, which was a little bit strong. Some people thought, I don't. Know, I thought it was very attractive. So it, it I just based, you know, it, you know, whatever it brings, that's what it's worth to somebody. And uh, it went for one hundred and one thousand, one hundred and seven thousand. It went for um, twenty seven thousand dollars over its high estimate, but it was a beautiful, beautiful object. Uh, let's see here. What's the size of it? 16 inches in height also. It was pretty big. It wasn't, you know, seven or eight inches in size. So it was a very large, um, you know, incense burner, formal incense burner for an altar. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was I talked about this when we were, we were doing the preview because I just liked it. I just thought this was, I like to look, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't. I should probably look at only the expensive things. But uh, um, all these things are expensive, of course. But uh, this, I just thought, was wonderfully done. It was very whimsical. It was a lantern, of course, with a reverse painting on the glass. And then these, these, these gilt bronze uh, dragons climbing up, uh, 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 climbing up the sides over the top and so forth. Just a really interesting, interesting piece. And, uh, you know, it, it, the greatest table lamp you ever owned. And uh, very nicely done. And the glass panels miraculously aren't broken. Um, it, it, they were estimated at ten to fifteen thousand. It was that was the figure they put on it, and it went a bit over it. It went for eighteen thousand nine hundred dollars. But a really terrific example, truly terrific. And um, 
Uh, I hope I hope uh, one of you bought this. I just thought that was great. All right, and that was sort of how it went. They had a few buy-ins. It wasn't too bad. Um, they didn't have the kinds of buy-ins that the that poor Sotheby's had to go through with their chap. Their uh, that Korean sale they ran. That was a, afraid a bit of a disaster for them. But uh, it happens in the auction world. Everybody's had. Everybody's seen them. Um, but uh, Christie's, I think, played it smart. They uh, put uh, modest uh, estimates on things. And, um, and did a heck of a good job promoting the sales. And this sale um, actually ended up uh, um, grossing around $20 million, which was uh, a good bit more than, than, the, than the sales that took place over at Sotheby's for uh, the Chinese works of art. Uh, but it was also a pretty big sale. There was a lot of content here. There was more content in fairness. Um, so I think they both should be pretty happy with how everything went. Uh, there are uh, a number of good sales coming up. As I mentioned uh, the other day, there are the uh, Hong Kong sales, which many of you have been uh, looking at. There's some absolutely great things. They have the sort of boutique sales they're doing with, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 lots, smaller sales and so forth. And there's an auction I just came across today. Uh, check back in a, in a few days. The auction isn't for another month, but I want to do some work on it. Um, it looks like one of the most interesting auctions I, I've seen in a few years. And uh, it's, it's so far, it hasn't gotten a lot of promotion. It's not. It's being done um, in Paris and um, um, uh, outside of Paris, and it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, a long time collection over there, and uh, we'll be doing a video on that. And I hope you hope you uh, stay tuned. We, we, we've we've already posted the catalog for that sale. By the way, the French sale um, over on um, on the uh, glo on the uh, on the catalogs over on the homepage at Bitamout. They're there. If you want to get a jump on it, go over and take a look. Uh, it is the first catalog in the rack at the top on the upper left. Right, it will appear in a second. It just went up today. There it is. Is the big Buddha head on it? That is a absolutely fabulous looking auction absolutely fabulous and um we'll be we'll be talking about that too okay uh have a great week subscribe if you haven't thank you for watching and uh have a great rest of your uh, sunday night and we'll see you uh this week we've got a we got a bunch of videos we're going to be putting out and uh, we're also going to be doing a follow-up say a follow-up video on the uh, topic of the Yuan Ming Yuan, um, a lot of the, that video got a lot of attention recently, and um, we, uh, uh, one of our viewers, um, has sent me a really interesting book. I was doing some research on what happened to this stuff, what happened to, where did it all go, and uh, why is it all still there? And uh, there's a very good book that was sent to me about it, and I gathered up some other information on that topic. And I want to put together a video, sort of a, an autopsy of what happened to all that wonderful material. And, um, and uh, it, it'll be an interesting video. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right. Bye-bye.